today's video, I am gonna be making my Christmas presents. So, I am not a seamstress. I'm not a sewer at all. <laughs> I have had a sewing machine for a couple years now and I have never once used it. And part of what I'm trying to do with learning how to save more money and be more thrifty is I need to learn how to make things and I need to learn how to fix things. So one of my goals was to learn how to use my sewing machine and just be more comfortable with the process of learning how to make things and fix things. I went to the fabric store with my roommate today. She is a great seamstress and she's really good at making things. And so she told me that she would teach me and kind of step me through some of the process. So I'm going to get started on cutting out the pattern and I decided that my first project should be an apron. It seemed like a pretty safe bet, but the pattern actually ended up being harder than I was expecting. But instead of focusing on the whole project, I just focused on the next step. After working on the project for a few hours, I decided to go check out a little vintage fair that was by my house. It was so amazing to see all of the old relics. I ended up buying a vintage noodle maker, which I'm really excited to put to use hopefully this week. And I also got an old lantern and an old vintage table. The table didn't fit where I was hoping it would, so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it yet. But regardless, I had so much fun checking out all the cool old treasures. The next day, I decided to get a head start on my sewing project. My roommate helped me with the first few steps and showed me what to do next, and I got to work. So, <clears throat> I'm taking a break from my sewing project because Learning's hard sometimes. <laughs> and I'm doing okay, I'm doing pretty good. But it's just not as perfect as I want it to be. You know, like I want it to be perfect and straight lines. And there's this one section that I had to redo like four times. And I had to like rip out all the stitches. And then I got kind of confused of like where I was at and I lost my place and it was just hard. <laughs> but the good thing is that I bought enough fabric for five aprons. And I am not going to let that fabric go to waste. So that means that I have to keep pushing through and keep learning. And I figured it out. It doesn't look perfect. The stitches are not perfect, but I just need to keep going. So since I don't want to waste all that fabric, I just need to keep pushing forward until I figure it out. And I have five aprons to figure it out. <laughs> so I've committed myself to it and I might not do this again, I'm not sure. <laughs> but. It'll be good for me and I think if I look at it as the end goal is that I just want to be able to learn how to use my sewing machine better. I want to understand my sewing machine. I want to have it be more second nature and even if I get five crappy aprons from it, for one, like I'm giving it to my family so like they're going to love them I think no matter what even if they look a little janky. But the goal is just to get more familiar with my sewing machine. So even if they look a little janky, that's okay. I can still count it as a success. I took a little break just to step away from it for a second and I made a crock pot soup. I just used um, a bunch of vegetables, 
that I had in my fridge. Um, my mom used to call it a hobo soup. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> Where you just take anything that's in your fridge and throw it into your soup. So I've got broccoli in there. I've got an onion from the garden and some carrots. I've got what else do I have in there? Some squash from the garden, bone broth, seasonings, and then I'm gonna put some rice in at the end. Oh, and elk burger. Um, so pretty good, nutritious meal. Um, I also tried a new little hack that one of you actually told me about. Um, someone on my Instagram that follows my videos told me that instead of just putting your like soft carrots into your bone broth bag, which is what I was doing just as a scrap to cook it with my bone broth, um, try putting them in cold water and putting them in your fridge. And it was so amazing. The soft carrots totally became crunchy and firm again. And so I ended up using those carrots for my soup. So that'll be done. And I'm gonna take a quick shower because I have not showered or even brushed my teeth or anything all day. And it is 3.40, which is disgusting. But <laughs> I've just been working all day on aprons and I need to get cleaned up a little bit. I feel gross and we're gonna have company later. Some of the girls are gonna come over and they're gonna work on some of their projects and I'm gonna keep working on my apron, but I just need to step away from it for a second and take a shower, get cleaned up, have a little breather. Okay, so I am showered and clean and fresh faced. I already feel so much better. Um, <laughs> one thing I thought I would share that is kind of funny is I have been determined to learn how to French braid. I should be able to do it by now, but indeed I am not. <laughs> and so what I've been doing is after I get out of the shower, I've just been doing a French braid. After I get out of the shower, so I'm doing it like every night or so. And so far I haven't really gotten any better, but I will show you my progress. I feel like my French braiding skills are equivalent to my sewing skills. <laughs> it works. It looks like French braid from most angles, but if you look too closely, not good. <laughs> One thing that has made a huge difference is getting a good pair of tweezers because I didn't even realize it, but I just was not plucking my eyebrows for like maybe a year <laughs> because I would just get so frustrated because these old ones just couldn't grab it. And so I got a new pair and I have like four or five of these that I am going to declutter gonna go in the declutter pile it's much better to have one that works really well than four that kind of work half as well I've grabbed some rosemary and I am gonna make my house smell like fall <laughs> I've been having so much fun lately learning how to make things from scratch and to be more self-sufficient. This morning I was in church and I was thinking, what does that mean to be self-sufficient? Does it mean that I really don't need anyone or anything? Does it mean that I spend my conversations griping about the government or society these days? Does it mean that I need to just focus on self-love and putting my needs first? Or does it mean that I push the wisdom of others away so that I can stand on my own and claim that I did it all by myself? I've tried on all of these different perspectives and so far it doesn't feel like any of them fit. But I can tell you what has felt right recently. 
To me, self-sufficiency has felt more like a slow and steady realization that I can't do it alone. When my plans fail, when my knowledge runs dry, when I exhaust all my efforts, I'm painfully aware of the fact that I can't do it alone. Surprisingly, even when I succeed, even when I feel victorious, I still realize that I'm in need of more. God has been teaching me how to separate myself from the world around me, from my job, from my things, from my relationships, and really fully rely on Him. He has been teaching me that all the self-sufficiency that I need lies within my relationship and my dynamic in Him. That's where I truly come alive. My relationship with God has felt like a garden. He keeps telling me that I don't need to focus on the production of the plants. All I need to do is enjoy the garden. I get to just rest and enjoy the still waters and green pastures. It is a true sufficiency that cannot be dwindled by rejection, failure, or boredom. That has given me freedom to be content in what I have. I think that this is a practice that takes time to become more natural and to become an outflow of my life. But in the last year, it has become much easier to be content with exactly what I have and to enjoy exactly where I'm at. Until next time, friends, goodbye.